Broadcasting from Sydney, Australia, this is Front and Centre with Emilio Garcia. Brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Well, the American left has celebrated Venezuela's socialist economic model for a long time and called for its imitation elsewhere. Unfortunately, as you just saw, the model appears to be encountering some fairly predictable difficulties recently. Now, last week in this space, I talked about how socialism was something America needs more of. But let's not romanticize socialism the way conservatives romanticize capitalism. These are economic systems, not your first kiss. With violence, political unrest, and even starvation now sweeping the country, which, by the way, does not have toilet paper, does the left still think that socialism works? To people under 40, their reaction is night and day from that of baby boomers, for whom socialism has always been seen as communism's gay cousin. <laughs> if, you, if there are five of us in a room, and I have five dollars, and nobody else has any money, and I just give each person a dollar, then everybody in the room is better off except for me. That's true, but I now know have, I have no incentive to go out and make five more dollars, because you're all just going to take the money. But very few, if anyone in Venezuela, want to go back to the pre-Chavez years of unbridled capitalism. So uh -huh. much so that the leader of the opposition, Enrique Capriles, calls himself a socialist. And what democratic socialism is about is saying that it is immoral and wrong that the top one-tenth of one percent in this country own almost 90 percent almost own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. Socialist ideologies are on the rise, becoming more and more mainstream every day. The desire of people for government-sponsored comfort and stability has also provided some up-and-coming populist leaders with the appeal that is needed to rise to power. Though this aims to be a podcast where centrist ideas are front and center, it would be a downright lie for me to claim that I see any benefit to socialism when it comes to our society. A thought shared by Gloria Alvarez, a Guatemalan activist who has made her career combating socialism and populism. Now you have to play a new game, and this new game is democracy. And what's democracy about? Well, convincing a bunch of ignorance to vote for you, because once you're in power, you're going to make them rich, and everything is going to be free. We'll be talking to Gloria Alvarez after this short break. I want to take a second and ask you to go to theunshackled.net and download your free ebook, The Unshackled Battlefield. Learn about the founding principles of The Unshackled and what made the organization what it is today. And since I have you, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, and now back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. On today's episode, we're talking about socialism. As I made it clear in the past, I'm no fan of Donald Trump. But there is one thing that he said during his speech to the UN that I think very few people could refute. The problem in Venezuela is not that socialism has been poorly implemented, but that socialism has been faithfully implemented. I asked Gloria Alvarez about this. But what we see when it comes to socialism is that everywhere that it has been implemented, there is an element of control at some point and the government begins to overreach. What is it about an economic model, in your opinion, that leads to these overreaches in government? Well, socialism uh, is based on the premise that economics can be controlled from the desk of a bureaucrat, and that prices are something that can be implemented by law. You cannot control something that is so spontaneous, so diverse, and that has information is spread all over. No one knows better the business than the people that are inside that business. The lady who sells tomatoes knows better what price the tomato should be so she doesn't go to bankruptcy. But for socialism, the lady that sells tomatoes no, knows nothing. The guy who sells tables or chairs knows nothing. The only ones that know everything are the immaculate bureaucrats. So that's why socialism inherently will annul your liberty, because it's based on the premise that from the state you can control everything. Naturally, this is correct. Socialist models are based on the fact that a government bureaucrat can decide what the best prices are for the public and that the government is well equipped to do so. The issue is, of course, that an economy is run by the actions of the, and the preferences of the people. 
and these move these invisible hands cannot be run by the government. All of these comments and opinions are set on historical precedent, which is why I find it strange that so many seem to be so eager to ignore some of the evidentiary history of socialism. And there's a clear history behind this, which is why I find it so strange, almost shocking, that there are people, especially I'm sure, I'm not sure how it is in Guatemala, but uh, in Mexico we have kind of like the limousine, the limousine socialists who revere historical figures like El Che Guevara and Fidel Castro. But my question is, how do you think that all these, peoples are, all these people are arriving at the conclusion that El Che and Fidel were these wonderful people when there is perfectly extensive historical uh, evidence that they were everything but? So what happens with uh, these socialist leaders is that they uh, speak from this moral superiority where they think that their ideas are so valuable that there is, is justified for you to kill someone in order for those ideas to get implemented. So the people who defend Fidel Castro and Che Guevara say, okay, yeah, they were murderers, but they murdered for a good cause. So they have like this moral relativism where Pinochet is a fucking killer, whereas Che Guevara, no, he was a good guy. And also there's a lot of misunderstanding most of the kids that wear the Che Guevara shirt have never in their lives read the biography of Che Guevara. They don't know what they're wearing. It's an honest one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This, honest one, yeah. this last point is incredibly important. Kids today in their Che Guevara t-shirts have never really heard or read an honest account of El Che Guevara's history. It seems clear that the evidence against socialism is overwhelming, and one would think that two people that are eager to engage in civil discourse would reach that same conclusion. But what happens when the people that you talk to think that the act of disagreeing with them is innately an act of bigotry? Unfortunately, what we're seeing uh, now, and this is uh, uh, a trend, a very dangerous trend, yeah. that essentially whenever you say something that they don't agree with, they can essentially label you uh, well, a popular term is a Nazi, but they can just basically label you a horrible person. We'll be discussing this matter after this short break. Did you know that Front and Center is on Twitter? Twitter is the easiest way to connect directly to me. My Twitter handle is FRNT and Center. Again, that's FRNT and Center. And though many of you will not be able to find my shadow band account right away, you can find me because of my free speech loving followers who are constantly interacting with me. And since I'm plugging myself here, why not subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts? Thanks, and now, back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. We're going to dive into a subject that perhaps seems irrelevant to the central subject, but I believe is of huge importance. Many people, when they are faced with a speech they disagree with, will try to shut it down. This is especially obvious when it comes to people who are somewhat simpatico with socialism, especially when it comes to young people on the left. Unfortunately, what we're seeing uh, now, and this is uh, uh, a trend, a very dangerous trend among uh, leftists, and I always try to try to separate between the left and leftists, because I think sometimes they get piled on together. The left, I feel there are people that can be on the left to be perfectly reasonable people. Then you have mm -hmm. leftists, who I think you, you encountered on your trip in, to Mexico City, uh, yeah. that essentially whenever you say something that they don't agree with, they can essentially label you, uh, well, a popular term is a Nazi, but they can just basically label you a horrible person. So they, 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 it seems hard to counteract with facts when facts don't seem to matter. But you, you don't have to convince the ones that are not willing to listen. You just have to focus on those who can be captured by those not willing to listen. It's, it's what happens with feminism, for example. You have, a, you have this trend on the leftist feminist uh, movement where they, they, they don't even want equal rights. They want to uh, end the uh, male uh, individuals in the planet, you know? It's yeah. something putting women first, second, third place and no males around, okay? It, it has become crazy. But there are a lot of, uh, you know, young girls that are trying to find their way 
in these machista countries, and when they go out to the streets, it is more probable that they're going to be, you know, approached by one of these crazy feminazis than someone that tells her, listen, this is uh, the virtue of selfishness of Anne Rand. Read it. This is where you're going to understand that you have rights because you are an individual. So what we need to understand is we don't need to go after the ones that don't hear reason, but we need to put up the fight so that those who do not hear reason don't capture the minds of people who generally are looking for answers in this world. What Gloria is expressing is that maybe our approach towards the Antifa SJW types who will try to shut you down at the first sign of any intellectual opposition is inherently flawed. They may never even want to hear reason, and they certainly shout a lot louder than rational people. That's why it is our job to continuously make our voices heard. Make sure that those ideas don't spread to a wider audience than they have spread to already. This brings us to the centrist conclusion segment of the program. Socialism is a system that has failed everywhere that is implemented. A proper defense of socialism is not to point at countries like the ones in Scandinavia, where many socialist programs exist. These countries have a respect for private property and are overall capitalists. The millennial craze for socialism, in all likelihood, is a combination of the desire for free things, or to put it differently, government-sponsored comfort, with a combination of social pressure. Gloria Alvarez fights every day to keep Latin America and the rest of the world from seeing another Venezuelan story a rich and prosperous nation turned to chaos by socialism. I thank her greatly for being on the show. That brings us to the end of this episode of Front and Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you to The Unshackled for allowing us to use their platform. If you have any ideas or opinions, tweet at me at FRNT and Center, or find me on Facebook. I'll read the most interesting stories on the air. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. There are always two sides to the story, so keep it central. Thanks for tuning in to Front and Center. Please visit frontandcenter.net.au for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net. And keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.